there is quite a bit of things that have actually changed in Kali from the 2020.3 release over to 2020.4. Um, one thing I noticed, right click applications and your applications are there. <laughs> I didn't know, I don't know why that one has taken so long, uh, to get into a Kali Linux instance, but I do like that ability to be able to get into that a little bit easier, um, versus coming up here and, you know, typing in a bunch of different stuff. They have made some agreements with third party authors and to include their tools actually into uh, Kali. So some of the tools that, uh, before. Um, you may have to go download. There's even more of those that's over here and it's included now. Um, one of those is uh, Fern. So Fern Wi-Fi Cracker is now included on here. There's also some other little things they added in like um, the Mate, uh, some of the Mate products here. There is this Mate uh, calculator. There's also built-in uh, DB browsers for uh, SQLite. That's right there. Let's see. Kali Undercover Mode. So what do you think this one will do? You click on it, it switches over <laughs> to Windows 10 mouse pad. It, everything looks like Windows uh, in this environment. So you can do all of those same sort of things. Let's take a look over here at um, some of these release notes. A Z shell was the shell now by default. They did give a heads up in the previous one that they were going to go to that. You can obviously uh, switch back. It says right here, you can revert back to bash, uh, do this. If you want to revert back to bash uh, temporarily, um, you can just type in the word bash. One of the things you'll notice is that they also kind of gave a new facelift to the bash. So uh, that's why it looks very similar to the other one. Okay, switch back to Z shell. Again, here is the command if you're wanting to switch back. So Z shell will be the default on all the images and the cloud. So Windows subsystem for Linux is going to be uh, staying just on bash. And I'll tell you this, I've been avoiding a bit of Z shell. So if you don't know Mac OS, the current version is Big Sur, but the version before that, uh, Catalina, they started uh, forcing folks to, you know, use Z shell, or it's also one of those that's recommended. And if you open up the terminal on a Mac, it will say something such as, hey, guess what? you should, uh, you know, get, start getting used to Z shell. How do I get it? Good question. I ran a set of commands. I think it's actually down here at the bottom, but I did update my 2020.3 all the way over to 2020.4. So bash shell makeover was the next piece here. While they're tweaking ZSH, uh, they updated their bash prompt, um, to make it feel similar like the ZSH prompt. Um, and you can see they also just changed the colors from red to blue. Uh, so it's always been red in the past and now over here it is blue. Next up we see partnership with tools authors. So, but it's basically going to allow some of those packages to, you know, constantly, you know, stay updated. This is when people first log in. Um, so you just run an SSH on your Kali. Uh, this is what comes up, uh, some additional just instructions. I think the main thing that's really important for all of us here is just simply that Python 2 is not going away. <laughs> uh, Python 2, if you don't know, most of these hacking tools, they rely heavily, heavily on Python 2 here. So Kali docs and packaging. So if you basically, if you build a package for Kali, all you've got to do is read through the solutions here and you can actually submit something. So if you build a really cool hacking tool, you can get it included in the actual application. I am sure though, um, you know, it's got some instructions here on setting it up. I'm sure there's a lot of different hurdles that you've got to run through. Uh, so here is a list of the new tools and the updates uh, that came out. I think one thing that's a bit important here is, is that the actual Linux kernel is now on five. There has been obviously quite a bit of improvements uh, to that. And what we could do here is let's try a uname dash a we're on 5.9.6 which is uh, a pretty uh, recent build there is another build but it is always good to keep that kernel um, up to date these uh, all of these programs or some of them metasploit is now on six it was on five different wallpapers there is a variety of these wallpapers that it already ships with all of these um, so wallpapers 
there's a lot of different types of designs here. So Cali Net Hunter. Oh, this was the backup configuration, and you can change the boot. Who is going to just download it just for this boot icon? Winkex has been uh, updated here too. Uh, this enhanced session mode, which works like a remote desktop and client native to Windows. Yeah, I made this video on WinCAX, kind of going into WinVer to we had to set up WSL2. We'll see what else we have here. So VMware, some community shout out, and here is the instructions to download it. ZSH, so here it is by default, and I didn't really do anything, it just comes with it this way. And so this is the default prompt. So you got your name and then you've got your at, the little Kali Linux thing here, and then your PC name, which is pretty sweet by default because you can do things like, you know, ls-l, and you're starting to see that you've got some color. Uh, whereas before, when we were working over there in Bash, uh, you didn't really have, you know, any of that so far. And also, it's easier to read. <laughs> So directories are always in blue, and this is just the default. I haven't changed anything, which we may, we're going to, we're going to run something in just a second. Um, these are completely in blue to uh, user share word list. This was a place that I was just at um, the other day. And so I just hit tabbed a couple of times. And this one is also saying ZS or Z shell is saying, do you want to see all possibilities? So I'm just going to go no there uh, because that directory is large. But you get some of these things for completely free. Uh, you know, go back and do that LSL here. Um, these nice little glyphs. So some of the glyphs that before, like in Bash, you may not have had these. You may have seen like something like some of this sort of a thing. Uh, if you see my prompt. Uh, a lot of this just comes... You know, it comes free. It's out of the box. You can do something like this right here. USR. We're just going to go share. And then we're going to go word. Okay. So you can see how this kind of maps up. Uh, USR, uh, SH for share. So the first couple of letters. And then you can tab. Voila. <laughs> Viewers. is that you can do this. This is the whole, this is the whole reason that you can do, that you can, uh, you should install this. I will say you basically can call out things I think a lot better than what you could previously when you just had text. So this one is actually under Git. So one of the things that I wanted to do at least today was go in and get some additional support for when a project is under Git. Let's take a look at oh my Z shell. Here is a couple of examples of like when you're inside of a Git um, or a Git initialized folder or directory, uh, you can see like, are you in master? Um, what other branches uh, do you have or whatever? And so um, this is also, there's like, there's thousands or so of plugins for this right here. Um, it's pretty easy to get started. I'm sure there's a whole bunch more of like information about what it is. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this command right here, which I'm going to copy this. If you type in like a command, like the one that we just had, you can see that it is no longer super difficult or super hard to figure out where the bases are. Um, and also like here's the main part of that command. I think this makes it a lot easier to read. So we're going to uh, we're going to run this command, or you scream, "Oh my Z shell!" Look over the .z sr file to select plugins, themes, and options, and you can already tell if you haven't already down here at the very bottom. Uh, we already have got some stuff for free. We're going to add something else to it. So I want to just exit. This is the prompt right now. I don't really like this one. So far, all that we've done is uh, we've installed oh my Z shell. And so um, it gave us some of the syntax highlighting. Well, it gave us some of the ability to see if we're inside of a Git a directory on our hard drive. Now what we're doing is we're coming in here. We're going to install a theme. So remember I was talking about with oh my Z shell, you get tons of themes. They're all community. This is one that is uh, pretty popular. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. We are installing this with OMA ZH Z shell. 
So I'm gonna take this command right here and let's just take this, we're gonna paste it. All right, and then let's go and look over here. Uh, and then you need to set this file. So let's go back over and we're gonna do a nano. Uh, we're gonna go into this screen and what do we have here? Uh, we're going to go Z shell theme. It's going to be this one. Um, let's just get rid of that and let's change our theme to the new one. Let's save it. Let's exit and let's bring it back open. So, uh, the PowerShell configuration, uh, it'll ask you a few questions. Does this look like a diamond? So I'm going to go, yes, uh, this one does look like a lock. Yep, that looks like the logo. Do all these icons fit between the crosses? Yes. Which one do I want? We're going to go with the uh, classic one here. Um, or we could go with the rainbow one. Let's go three. Uh, character set. Uh, Unicode. We're going with number one. Go in Unicode. All the way. Show the current time. Nope. I don't need a current time on that. One. Separator here. Oh, yes. We want angled. Uh, prompt head, uh, we're going to go sharp. This is all just use your preference. Uh, so you can do what you'd like to, obviously. Uh, we're going to go flat. Um, actually, I'm starting to lack the two-liner. So we're going to go two-line there. Uh, disconnected. Uh, I think the icons would be nice to have. Let's go fluent. And let's go Y. And we're going to go... Uh, verbose. Yes, we finally, finally did it. That source folder that we were just in, we're going to go MB crump Twitch. And there we are. Now we've got some nice little icons for our future streams here. We've got the little GitHub icon here. We're on main. We would go in here and we're just going to use this one. And I think that would get us there, correct? Uh, let's put the clone in here. Paste clipboard. This is for syntax highlighting. Let's see. I pasted this command wrong. This one. Okay, no errors this time. Okay, so let's do an ls. Let's see. Let's try some other stuff here. I just want to make sure it's working. Okay, so it put up the dot dot here for us. And let's go downloads. Okay, so perfect. So it, it you can see it kind of filled that in. Linux surface. Okay, friends, um, that is a recap of Kali Linux. Oh.